Uh, good morning and all who are here with us. This video is not live, so you're not here with us at the moment, but you are here in spirit, so thank you. Do you ever take a photograph where you're trying to get super close? I have discovered that for images, uh, flowers, it's best to be up close. And for tree bark, it's obviously best to be up close. But, you know, with a much better camera than an iPhone mini 12, 12 mini, one could take a very nice photograph of this moisture on this unopened daffodil bud. And a very clear image of early spring. Spring in gestation. Spring gestating. Which brings up another curious topic. You know, sometimes folks that read quite a few books or have read books over the course of a lifetime, maybe have a vocabulary that's um, replete with polysyllamic words. And I used to have this routine and regular argument with folks that to be understood, one should use plain language. And I do agree with that, to be understood by Vox Populi. But I also think that we value, I think to a large degree, we have a country that values anti-intellectualism. In other words, to be an intellect in this country or to be smart or to display intelligence, that's Language is just one aspect of intelligence. I mean, some people have a higher, I may have a wealth of vocabulary that others do not share. I may have a wealth of vocabulary that others who read similar books to me share. You may have a wealth of practical experience that I don't share. You're probably better at taking apart an automobile than I will ever be. Um, you are better at flying an aircraft than I am. I mean, there's so many things that we each individual on the planet has a set of gifts, right? Sometimes the gifts are spiritual. Sometimes the gifts are material. Sometimes the gifts are community based. Sometimes the gifts are someone who has an easy way of meeting new people who can strike up a conversation with just about any and everyone they meet. I worked in a field that required these skills, but often didn't find it on new recruits who went to business school. When I say some of the best business schools in the country were churning out folks who couldn't write a simple grammatically correct, syntactically correct sentence on an email or had trouble talking to people of a higher intelligence, even though they themselves knew every nuance of finance. So what we're raising to some degree is experts. I think in general, what we should be raising is generalists. So let's discuss that. What does that mean? A broad-based liberal arts education in the first four years and specialization after that, unless you're going to go into a field like medicine, unless you're going to practice to be a, a doctor, a neuroscientist, you know, a scientist, a hard scientist, or a soft scientist, so-called. But I think all of us could benefit by reading more books. All of us could benefit by reading more books, taking more photographs, having more conversations, talking to our neighbors. But occasionally, if you get dinged for being pedantic or proselytizing because your vocabulary is richer or uses words that 90% of Americans or people don't understand. Well, you know, that's what Google is for. Think about one thing. Language plays two roles. One, you can talk down to someone, which is not fair to the other person, or you can talk up to a person. And when you talk up, it requires that them to do some thinking. And if they're brave enough, which we all should be, they should ask the question, what does that word mean? I never heard it before. Then they might use that word later in a sentence because and it makes them gives them an opportunity to be seen to have a higher level of discourse with someone. I think talking up to people instead of talking down to people is what we should be doing. 
we are so accustomed, I believe, to this idea of anti-intellectualism. And I'm not talking about whether you have advanced degrees. I'm talking about whether you read a lot of books, whether you're curious in general. Some of us are born with curious minds that have endless appetites for new things, new knowledge. And I happen to believe that that's a very healthy outlook. Can, can this be taught using richer language? Yes, my, the following steps need to be taken. One, read more books. Two, discuss those books with others. Three, be confident enough to ask a question when you don't know the answer or be confident enough to ask a question to help others practice the Socratic method. In other words, talk up to people rather than down to people. Talk up to people rather than down to people. Sometimes I get in these endless dialogues with folks on the Constitution. I've taken six constitutional law classes at Coursera.org, one of our affiliates on my website. Why did I take so many constitutional law classes? Because I find it exciting. I know more than the average person about the Constitution, but I certainly don't know more than constitutional law scholars. There's certainly about probably, I don't know how many people who know more than I do, but I am invigorated by a discussion about the Constitution. I think there's a, I think it's, we have the thinnest Constitution of any of world democracy or republic. One can go to it and read it. It's open to interpretation. Thomas Jefferson believed it should be a living document. Some of our founders believed that one could read it literally. Well, there's some mores that have changed over the time from the founding fathers. So I think that argument is ridiculous. Jefferson, at least in this regard, was forward thinking. He also believed, unlike Hamilton, Jefferson believed that we should not leave our heirs the debts of our selves. In other words, we should clear our debts every 18 years. Hamilton believed that after the Civil War and the Revolutionary War, all the debts that were assumed by the colonies should be absorbed into the federal government, thus concentrating the powers in the Northeast and creating the Fed. So we live in Hamilton's economy. We live in Hamilton's country. If you want to learn more, there's an article on Durham Cool about this subject. It's a really interesting discussion, Hamilton or Jefferson. We don't live in Jefferson, Jefferson's United States. We live in Hamilton's United States. So I apologize for going off topic. I meant to talk about this <laughs> moisture. Thank you for listening.